are here at Kingdom MMA in Edmonton, Alberta with our homeboy Aaron and today we are going over MMA skills. We're going over the mixture and fusion of styles and systems and uh, tell us a little bit about where we're at and what you guys do here. So we're at Kingdom MMA in Edmonton, Alberta. We've been open for five years, going nice and strong. Um, we're a fully functioning uh, like professional fight gym, but we also have a lot of uh, classes, a lot of members who are just here for fun, fitness, self-defense. Awesome. So for somebody sitting at home, MMA, you see the UFC, you see a bunch of athletes training. Uh, what does it mean to train MMA? So you're going to start off with a learning each individual piece separately. Isolated, it's easier to learn that way. You're gonna blend it together. And the goal is by that point, it's its own martial art. We're not looking at Muay Thai versus Jiu Jitsu. It's MMA as its own combat sport. And so I know you do train a lot of pro fighters, uh, amateur fighters. Can somebody who's never done martial arts start with MMA? Absolutely. Like I said, we, we separate it just cause it's easier to learn but a lot of people here will never fight. They have no desire to fight. They enjoy watching it on TV. They enjoy the camaraderie on the team. They enjoy the fitness side of it. At the end of the day, we all do it because it's fun. Perfect. Well, we have a great session here today. Hopefully you guys stay tuned and enjoy it. All right, so we're gonna be going through the basics of MMA today. We're gonna start with just uh, specific striking. We'll put our strikes together into takedowns. We'll use our takedowns to defend against striking. And then we'll do the, uh, the cage wrestling that is kind of unique to MMA, okay? Helping me out with all of that is gonna be Dawson. Dawson's one of my amateur athletes getting ready for his first amateur fight. He's been training with us for four years now. All right, so we're gonna start with just some basic striking, okay? Every MMA fight does start standing up and it's, it's an essential part of the game. Even if you want to grapple, you've gotta be confident on the feet. All right, we're gonna be looking for fluid push-pull mechanics here. We're gonna be looking for offense and defense. And then I'm gonna be wanting Dawson to be using his footwork constantly, not just when I call for it, okay? It's gonna be an entire uh, rounded out striking session, not just one technique at a time. So we're looking for, like, offensively, I'm looking for basically smooth mechanics, good power generation on all the strikes, okay? Instead of loading up on one big one, we're throwing basic combinations. We're keeping his feet moving so he's always in an advantageous position. And then defensively, we're kind of playing with um, passive defense and active defense. Sometimes I'll tell him to slip, he knows what I want. 
okay? But sometimes I just throw a punch at him and I expect him to be in a position where he can defend and counter. He might just move away and give me nothing. I'll keep throwing it at him until I get something I like, okay? Same thing offensively. I'll be calling for a jab a lot. Good, we're gonna be using that now. Right, we'll go to the body. We might use that to set up the low kick. So we're trying to mimic an actual striking exchange in a fight. Okay, so we're gonna get into what, uh, what we would call like our shoot boxing portion of MMA. We're gonna combine what we just did with the striking and put it into our takedowns. Right, once we hit the mat, we're gonna kind of end it there. We're just worried about the transitional phase from our strikes into the takedown. Okay, so we're taking those basic striking skills, like the jab, and now we're trying to set it up with some strategies for takedowns. He shows me the jab, good, he enters for that double leg. Nice, okay. Once that's happened a few times, he'll have to switch it up. He goes for the single leg. Nice, okay. Now I know he wants to take me down, so I'm gonna start reacting to those takedowns. He shows me the same setup, he shows me that jab. He level changes for the takedown, I react, he comes back up now. The striking made the wrestling happen. Now the wrestling will make the striking happen, okay? Last piece, anytime we're talking takedowns, okay? Best way to take someone down is on defense. When I step in and I commit to a punch, he level changes underneath. I'm fully committed. I can't sprawl back. He hits his takedown again. So we finish our shoot boxing work, our takedown work. It's natural progression. We're gonna go to the ground, okay? We're gonna be doing basic jujitsu, okay? but with the addition of strikes. If, uh, if he doesn't use any strikes as he's passing my guard and all that, I can focus just on jujitsu. As soon as I start getting punched, there's that split second where I'm not focused on it. He's gonna use that to submit me to pass my guard, take him out, all that good stuff. So you see us going through the basic jujitsu positions, close guard, half guard, side control, knee on belly, mount, back. It's that basic structure of jujitsu, but with the strikes. If he only tries to pass my guard, okay, I can defend that. He punches me in the face once or twice. I have to react to that. That gives him a second to stand up. 
Okay, same thing with mount. <laughs> he's past my guard, he takes mount. If he's just trying to submit me from here, it's quite easy for me to stay tight, for me to defend that. So, but that threat of that posture and those strikes, I have to now defend that. I'm not worried about my limbs, because if I worry about my limbs, I'm gonna get punched in the face. That gives the arm bar, that lets him step around and get the submission. And same thing with the back. Anytime I'm getting punched in the face, he can't hit me in the back of the head. So it's a pretty natural thing for me to turn and give up my back. As I'm here and I'm getting hit, it lets him take my back fully. And it sets up that rear naked choke. So the strikes facilitate the wrestling. The wrestling facilitates the strikes. The strikes facilitates the jiu-jitsu. The jiu-jitsu facilitates the strikes. Okay, so we're gonna move on to cage and wall wrestling. Now this is something that is really MMA unique. No other combat sport has a vertical barrier. Uh, most others, you will have a ring out. You'll step out of bounds. Okay, if we take our takedown to out of bounds, we get stuck up against the vertical wall. Okay, so that means we've had to actually like develop MMA specific wrestling and grappling just for working on the wall. A lot of stuff doesn't apply and this is still part of the game that's being developed. So all those basic techniques that we worked in our shoot boxing okay, and our jiu-jitsu, we're just gonna adapt them now to the wall. He's gonna use a simple double leg to drive to the wall. Okay. Now, the wall gives me a prop. I don't have to work that hard to stay standing up. Okay. So he's gonna have to transition. He transitions to the single leg instead of just pushing me against the cage. Again though, I can use that wall as a, as a tripod, as a kickstand, however you wanna call it. I'm standing up using the wall. He's gotta take that away. He uses the wall now. He shells my leg. I can't get my leg back. He ankle picks me. And now it's tough. I can't get my hips out like I normally would in jujitsu. I can't move as much. And now he's using the wall to block me. His head is driving into mine. For me to stand up, I have to get a tripod. I have to get a foot, an elbow, and eventually my other foot. He takes advantage of that. Locks me up, laces up my legs. And now there's nowhere for me to go. If I try to go backwards, I go into the cage. I can't go away because of his body position. And now he's using the cage to pressure me to land more and more strikes. Good. Wow, that was amazing. It was really amazing seeing how it all fuses together from the striking to the takedowns to the ground to standing and especially the wall stuff. I think that was really cool. And not a lot of people I've seen show me how that that style works in MMA. So where can we find you? How can people get in contact? You can find us on our website, Instagram, Facebook, all the basic social media stuff. Perfect. Well guys, until next time.
Thank you so much for making it to the end of video. If you enjoyed our stuff, please hit that like, subscribe, share button. We want to spread this message of the power of martial arts to as many people as possible. We truly believe that people can tap into their true potential through the vehicle of martial arts. If you want more Budo Brothers, make sure to check us out at www.budobrothers.com where we're doing product drops all the time. We have apparel, training tools, so many innovative stuffs to match a martial arts lifestyle. And guys, thank you again for making it to the end of the video. Until the next one, happy training.